What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie, where we are all about diving into Linux and helping you get into the tech field. And today we're taking a deep dive into the latest and greatest version of Orch Linux. And you already know how we do it, breaking down the good stuff and making it all make sense. So whether you're a seasoned pro or just dipping your toes into Linux, we've got something for you. So grab yourself a coffee and let's get into it. All right, so I'm at orchlinux.org and I mainly just wanted to show you guys where to get the latest version. All you have to do is download it. And really it's just a release with a couple changes to it. And it was released a couple days ago on August 1st. And so if you click here on downloads up here at the top right, all you have to do is scroll down and you can find your mirror or up here at the top, you can see the magnet link or you can use a torrent link to download it that way using those types of services. But as you can see, the current release is 2024 8.1. And this version is powered by the new Linux 6.10 kernel. So what does that mean for you? Well, it's better hardware detection across the board. So whether you're rocking like the latest and greatest hardware, or you could be giving life to like one of those older computers. With this kernel, it's all about making sure Arch Linux runs smoother and faster. Now, one cool thing I'm gonna focus in on is the Arch Linux installer. Right now it comes with 2.8.1, and it's the menu based installer. I believe I showed it to you guys in the last video I did on Arch, but the updates to it are all about making the installation process a breeze, especially with like one of the new experimental features that they they have which is for LVM and I don't know if you guys remember in previous ones but LVM wasn't an option when setting up the drives and the only way to do it was to do the manual install of Orch Linux so right now it's experimental that's why they put the experimental on there but it's cool to see them add this for those of you who like to have more control over your partitions. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. And if you're new to all this, don't worry, I'll break it all down to make it easy to understand in the installation section of the video. Now, also, there's some neat stuff in the desktop department, and that's the Hyperland desktop profile, which has been updated to support more apps, giving you a richer experience out of the box. And they've also made the root partition setup smarter with the default size bumping it to a maximum of 50 gigabytes, making it more flexible for whatever you're planning to do with your system. And that's one thing I love about what they're adding to the installer. They're making it more of the Orch way of doing things, which is the control you have, or at least as much control as they can give you to set up your system the way you want it. And that's the Orch way. It's all about setting up the system exactly the way you want it. So with these features that they're adding, you can definitely tell that they're pushing that direction with it. Now, one other thing I found interesting while doing research on the ISO release, the installer now supports Finnish translation. And that's for all you guys overseas. And it actually lets you use your current keyboard layout right from the get go. Plus, they've improved the installation process by addressing some pesky bugs and refining core functions to make it even more reliable. Now, remember, if you're already an Orch user, you could just run sudo pacman-syu to get all the latest updates without a fresh install. But if you're new or setting up a fresh system, this ISO is definitely worth checking out. Now, hold on. There's one other thing I wanted to cover right fast for you guys. So if you go over to the wiki and check out the installation documents for it, this is where you want to kind of start off, especially if you're going to do it the manual way or the arch way of doing the install. This will break down everything for you and walk you through each step of the install. But if you want to do it the manual way, I recommend you do it in a virtual machine a couple times before actually trying it directly on your hardware. I recommend you do it that way, but you can go through the full install and line up the way you want to set up the system. Like for instance, if you want to go into the partitioning of the drives and make changes to it and set it up however you want it. Like for instance, I use 
encryption with LVM. So you got to understand how to set up Lux, which is not that difficult once you understand what it's actually doing. And then LVM as well. But they have a breakdown of how to actually do it. And then they break it all down for you, especially like if you're using UEFI and depending on the partition table or partition type, you know, it's very detailed in here. And I just wanted to point that out to you guys, but they have, you know, a whole bunch of documentation here. And this walks you through the full install from checking the ISO to post configurations. Now let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through the install. All right, cool. So I'm logged into my virtual machine. I booted up the live ISO and I want to reiterate to you guys, this is not difficult, especially using the Arch install script because it'll walk you through each step of the process and it's not that difficult to do so don't be intimidated by the command line because this is the way orch will boot up it will boot up to a terminal and you're just sitting there with the little blinking cursor like what do i do now if you're going to do the manual install then you want to pull up that documentation and go through the process but like i said i'm going to do the orch install script so all you have to do is type orch install all one word and that's the program name or the script name and then press enter and that'll start the install process and you'll see it pop up with a menu and you just go through each one of these steps and then once you finish then at the bottom all you have to do is use your up and down arrow but all the way at the bottom is there's an install and it won't let you go past this step until you do all the configurations that are missing as you can see down here it says install to configs missing so it won't go through the install unless you have everything set up. So first thing is the language up here at the top. And I'll make sure I zoom in so you guys can see this. But the next thing is the mirrors. So you want to pick the closest mirrors to you. That way it's quicker on getting all the packages that you need. So you just click mirror region and then this will open up different locations. And what I'm going to do is press the up arrow because that's going to go all the way to the bottom because I'm going to select United States. So pick whatever country or region you're in. And then all you have to do is, you know, go to it and then hit the space bar. And you see that little asterisk popped up there. That means it's selected. And so all we have to do is press enter and I'll go back to the menu that we were at before and then go down the back because we have our mirror selected. We're good to go there and then it'll automatically select our locales. So we get to go. And then now the next thing is our disk configuration. So you just go down to that, press enter. You can go into the partitioning. And then what I'm gonna do is the easy way of actually installing you can go in and manually put partition you know your drives but we're going to use the best effort default partition layout so if we press enter there you you want to select your drive right at the top is a back device so you may see that on your system as well you don't want to select that you want to select your actual hard drive you should know what size it is mine is 34 gigabytes of space so we just hit the space bar there, just basically selecting that drive as the one we want to partition. And then we can select our file system. You have four options here, which is better FS, ext4, xfs, and f2fx. We're going to go with better FS. So I'm going to press enter there. And then it says, would you like to use better FS sub volumes with a default structure? Yes, I'm going to use a default. And then also with better FS, you can use compression. And I recommend you do that. That's just a benefit of using better FS as well as the copy on right option. You can disable it if you want to. We're not going to disable. I'm going to use compression. So let's press enter there. It'll give you a layout of what it's actually going to do. And basically, just so you guys know, everything we're doing right now is not actually doing anything to the system. It's basically writing out a configuration file for us that the installer will use to make all the selections for us or install the packages, also partition the files. So we haven't done anything to the system yet, just so you guys know. But this is a layout of what we selected. So, so we selected partitioning and all our options are under here, but you don't see them. Now, if you go over here, you can actually see that LVM is there as well. And that's the beta or experimental setup. So you can go ahead and select that, but we're not going to mess around with LVM. I'm going to just show you guys the normal partitioning. And so we got our disk configured properly. Now, also, you can select uh, disk encryption if you want to. We're going to roll with no encryption. And actually, I accidentally selected it, but we're going to go with no encryption. And so let's go back. And then our bootloader. We have two options in here. It's Grub and then Limon. <laughs> 
I always get a kick out of saying that, but Limon. But I'm gonna roll with Grub. I think I did a video showing you guys Limon in the past, but we are gonna roll with Grub, that's fine. Now swap, you can elect to have swap on or off. All you gotta do is change it from true to false, but by default, it'll pop up saying true. You could change it if you want to. Now your host name, you can set up your host name. I'm gonna just use Arch Linux, that's fine. And then root password. What I'm gonna do is set a password for it. So let's press enter. Let's hurry up and type in a password for it. And I definitely recommend you do a password for your root account. And then this is one of the cool features of the actual install script. You can create your users. So let's say you want to create more than one. You can, but I'm going to create one. Uh, it's going to ask you for the account name or the username and then type in the password twice. So we're going to do that as well. And then we can elect if we want to make this a super user or not. The default is yes. And that's what we're going to select. I want to have pseudo privileges for that account. So let's press enter. And like I said, you can confirm and exit. And let's confirm and exit because all I'm going to do is add one user. Now the profiles. Let's go up in here right fast. So all we have to do is hit type and we can specify the type of profile we want on the system. So they have the desktop, which this will allow you to install a desktop environment. You got your minimal, which will just be a base install. And that's one cool thing about the install script and i know i keep saying this one cool thing this one cool thing but nah this is you know one of the coolest parts of the install you can select what type of profile you want so let's say you're uncomfortable doing arch the manual way but it gets you to a point where you don't have a desktop environment you don't have a desktop manager and it's just very minimal tools on the system you should have at least like internet connection and all that stuff or whatever setup so if you use that minimal, you know, that'll get you to the point where you have a base system and then you could build upon it however you want to, almost similar to going through the install the manual way. It's almost like that. But then also you got your server version. You can set this thing up like a server. It's a server profile. I'm sure it comes with some server tools that you most likely want on the system. Then there's the Xorg version. So that comes with Xorg server. We're going to roll with the desktop. Let's go down and press enter. And I want to go and show you guys the options that you have in here. And as I told you in the overview that Hyperland got some updates. So we're going to install Hyperland desktop. So let's select that. As you can see, it shows you all the packages that it's going to install. So we got Dolphin, you know, obviously Hyperland, Kitty, Grim, Slurp, all those tools that we need for Hyperland to work properly. And so let's go down and press enter and move on to the next step. Now it's going to ask you right here, Hyperland needs access to your seat, which is a collection of hardware devices, keyboard, mouses, etc. And so you can make two selections here. There's Polkit and CD. I'm going to use Polkit and then we're good to go there. And then you do have some other options in here. You can select the type of graphics drivers that you want to install. So let's say you have an NVIDIA cord or something like that. You can install NVIDIA drivers, but we're going to use our open source. Like I said, this is a virtual machine. Doesn't have a video cord, you know, attached to it or anything. And then also the greeter we're going to use. You could select something different in here, but we're going to use a default, which is M, which is SD desktop manager. All we have to do is go back and then we're good to go. We got our profile set up. And then you got your audio settings. So I'm gonna just select some, even though I don't have any audio sent to this system, I'll get some audio set up on this server. Let's use Pipewire. So let's go down and use Pipewire. I know that's the one that they're pushing a lot now in the Linux community in general, they're pushing Pipewire as the replacement for Pulse Audio. And then kernels, you can go in here. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna show you guys the options, but they got a Horton Linux kernel. And then the kernels, we got a couple of options in here. So we got Linux, Linux Horton, we got the LT and then the Zen. So we're gonna roll with Linux. That way it'll get the kernel updates and all that stuff. So, but just wanted to show you guys the options. Now, right in here, you can add any additional packages that you want installed on the system. And you basically have to type them all in. So let's say it's for a couple of different packages. You could just type them in, but you have to put a space in between them. I'm not gonna install any, so I'm gonna just leave it blank. I'm gonna press enter. It'll take us back there, network configuration. And one thing I always do during my installs, just to make it quick, I'll just copy the ISO network configuration to the installation. That way to get it set up properly or you can use network manager, but you have to go in and configure it, you know, turn on networking, all that good stuff. I'm gonna just use the network configurations from the ISO, which works. So we're just gonna press enter there. As you can see, that's selected. So our time zone, you wanna select your time zone. So I'm gonna go through and find America, Los Angeles, cause I'm on the West Coast. Just select what applies to you. And let's press enter and then automatic time sync. 
that you could turn that to true or you could turn it off if you want to i don't see why you would want to but you do have that option there now one cool thing you could do is activate other repositories so you got multi-lib and testing i'm gonna turn on multi-lib and that's all i need now you got a couple options you can save the configuration if you want to that way you can use it for other systems and then you can install it so what we're gonna do is just run through the install so let's hit install and that will basically run through the script and right here is just a confirmation and if you scroll through this it breaks down everything that it's gonna do it's kind of like a summary of everything it's gonna do on the system so all you gotta do is press enter to continue and it'll go through the install and you'll see it it'll start formatting the drives and i won't go through this whole thing and let you guys watch it but it's gonna create our drives create our partitions set everything up like i said it wasn't making any changes before but now it's going through and installing the operating system and go through the full process so i'll be back when this finishes all right so the installation is complete and it will pop up with the screen right here and say would you like to root into your newly created installation this will allow you to go in and install other software this is like a second option you know in order for you to go in and install some more software that you need for the system and you can also do some post installation configuration which we don't need to the script handled everything we need and so we're good to go like but let's say you got some files you want to download or you want to get installed or something you got your dot files out there or you can get clone a repository down going on drop it into your account that way when the system boots up or let's say you have a backup of the system and you wanted to do a fresh install of orch using the new iso and you want to just copy everything back in as far as your configurations and all that stuff you can do that from here and this is your time to do a post installation configuration we're just going to hit no we don't want to go into the true root because everything is set up for us the installation script kind of set everything up for us so i'm not going to go into it it's just going to drop you back to the command line so all you got to do is type reboots because we're in the root account of the is so you don't have to type in no password sudo or anything you just hit reboot and then it'll boot into your fresh install of watch you'll see grub the grub menu pop up or if you're using limon then it'll pop up with that menu and then you can make your selections and boot into the system and boom here we are this is hyperland and so that's all you got to do to install orch so what do i think about all the changes so i gotta say i'm really impressed Orch has always been about giving you the tools to make your system exactly how you want it and these updates push that even further for instance, the new kernel support is a game changer for those who want the latest hardware support. I mean, it's like getting a tune up for your core. Everything just runs smoother. And that improved installer is another big win for those who might have been intimidated by the Arch manual setup in the past. The menu based installer is like having a friendly guide walk you through the process. And I admit it's not perfect but it's a step in the right direction, especially with the new LVM support that I showed you guys. I didn't use it, it's there, you do have that option. And also the desktop improvements, I love seeing that attention to detail. You know, the more apps and features we have right out the box, the better the experience for new users which is what Orch Linux is all about. And so overall, Orch Linux continues to live up to the reputation as a powerhouse for customization and performance. So whether you're building a minimalist setup or a full-fledged workstation, this release has got everything you need. All right, guys, so that wraps up for today. Thanks for hanging out with me as we explore the latest from Orch Linux. I hope you found this video helpful and maybe even inspire you to give Orch a try if you haven't already. Now remember, the world of Linux is all about exploration and learning, so don't be afraid to dive in and mess around. Trust me, I'm always tinkering, breaking stuff, figuring out how to fix it, you know, it's super fun. But if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Linux content and ring that notification bell so you never miss any update. And as always, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if there's something you want to see me cover in the future. I'm Josh, reminding you to keep pushing forward and never stop learning. See you guys in the next one. Keep it tech. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people, uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you gotta figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Cause yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator, but you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you gotta like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.